Hey everyone! Before we get into decoding, I actually want to talk a little more about picking, because I realized I told you about the mechanical use of the tool, but not what it actually feels like. One of the nice things, coming from a pin tumbler picking background, is that when the sidebar sets on a gate, it's a much more distinct feeling than when a pin sets on the shear line. However, particularly in these abuses, there are some false gates to worry about. So, when you're picking through the lock, there will be false gates on each of the disks. But what those false gates feel like compared to the true gate is just different enough that you might be able to differentiate between them. Now, the decoding part, which we'll talk about in a second, is what's going to save you when you can't differentiate between them. But for now, let's have a look at what a single disk looks and feels like when you're trapped in a false gate and when you find the true gate. So when you're manipulating a disk that's binding, you'll feel it grinding against the sidebar and then, when you reach either a true or false gate, suddenly go free. It'll loosen up and you'll have a little freedom of movement. And what you need to do is figure out exactly how much freedom of movement you have. So we're going to test the first one here. After you've tested how much wiggle room you have, moving into the next gate will require you to loosen your tension a little bit. So you just lighten up and then drop into the next gate. Now in the false gates we had a little room, but here in the true gate we have a lot of room to move. The, act, the practical difference isn't that much, but compared to one another it's, a, it's significant. So working in a true gate, you really do have a good amount of movement compared to the false gates, but it can be really difficult to tell when you're working blind inside of the lock. Some of the markings on Yako's tool can give you a big leg up, though, in confirming what you might be feeling. Let's have a look at what the actual tool itself is doing as we're entering the false and the true gates. So if we follow the position of the little hash marks, we can see that when we're in a false gate, we have about one full length of movement. And here in the next false gate, same deal, about the same amount. But now, in the true gate, we're actually moving beyond a full position. The range of movement is more than a single increment. And that can be a huge indicator, especially if you're already suspicious that you've hit the true gate. Some other things to watch out for when you're picking with this two-in-one type of tool is if you're having a difficult time moving between the disks, um, even after you've reoriented back to zero and start moving through, just make sure that you're working as directly perpendicular to those disks as popular. Sometimes it's easy to let your hand relax a little bit and start working at an angle, at which point you're not even going to be able to move into the next disk if you're lined up perfectly. So just remember to stay focused on all of those mechanical things and try to feel what's going on at the same time. And if you have trouble feeling exactly what's going on at the same time, and trouble differentiating between the true and the false gates, well, that's where the decoding comes in.